invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, in the title role of Luigi Vasco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. A year ago, when Luigi Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now, we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, it's been one year since I left Italy to come to America. America is a wonderful country. It is so big to make a man feel big to be part of. But there is one thing here making me feel very small. Pasquale's a daughter. <laughs> Pasquale never leave me alone. Always he say, when are you going to marry my Rosa? Mamma me, I never marry her. I stay bachelor. So I'm a happy man. Because in the morning, when the sun shines, I take all the antique chair outside of my store... And I sit for a little while and uh, just to relax. This I do this morning when my 12-year-old general manager, Jimmy O'Connor, he said to me. Boss, did you sell anything today? Yes. Great. What'd you sell? This is a chair I'm sitting in. Well, who'd you sell it to? Me. <laughs> Boss, I just can't understand you. What's wrong with me buying a chair? I love this chair. I pay $40 for it. I sell it to myself for 70 <laughs> Gee, boss. No more talking, Jimmy. I'm relaxed. And you, you got to get to school. You'll be late. Okay, boss. But if a customer comes by and likes that chair, please, stand up. Go by, Jimmy. He's a nice boy, Jimmy, but too much of the business, man. Ah, it's nice to just sit and think about things. Little things and the big things. Little things like the sun on my face. And the good feeling inside. And the bigger things... Like me, Luigi Bosco, sitting in front of his own store in Chicago, city of the United States of America. Ah, it feels good. Feels good. America, I love you. You like a Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. From my store, I see you sit in the sun, so I say, Pasquale... We have a talk with Luigi. About the what, the Pasquale? Guess. How many chances do you give me? One. Rosa. Right. <laughs> Luigi, I make up for my mind. You got to get married. Please, the Pasquale. I relax in the sun. I don't want to talk about the Rosa. Can you talk about something else? All right, all right. Don't get excited. I don't got to talk about a Rosa. I can talk about other things. Okay. We talk about other things. <laughs> well? I'm not the happy talking about other things. <laughs> but do you promise you got it? All right, all right. It's a fine morning, eh, Luigi? Si, Pasquale. It's a fine morning. There's only one way to appreciate a morning like this. Like me. I'm awake up. I'm hear my wife in the kitchen. I'm a smell of the coffee. I'm a go in. She's got a fine breakfast. That's how it is with a wife. Are you like this? Eh? Fine. Tomorrow I come over. I have a breakfast with you. I cannot do what I mean. <laughs> You need a wife to make a breakfast in your own kitchen. That's a nice, Pasquale. If your wife don't mind the coming over. Please, Luigi, don't make me mad. You know what I'm talking about. See, what do you always talk about? The Rosa. But now I'm relaxed. I don't want to talk. Luigi, don't forget, you owe me $800 to start an antique store. I only lend you this money so you marry my Rosa. Why you not go through with a bargain? Because Rosa is no bargain. <laughs> also, you never tell me this when I first borrow the money. Luigi, once and for all, we gotta settle this. Please, Pasquale. It's the time a man of your age you think about a marriage. I think about it when I find a girl. What do you think a rose is? You see, that even you're not sure. <laughs> the 
Luigi, you make me mad. Now, I'm going to tell you final. You already find the girl. Rosa, she's a for you. No. Oh, listen, Luigi. Rosa's are not to get any younger. Only fatter. <laughs> she's not the fat, but she's a jolly. Is a lot of jolly. <laughs> Now, listen to me, Luigi. Bachelor life is a no life for you. Just a thing. You're hungry. You want somebody to cook for you. There's the Rosa. There's the Rosa. Then maybe you want somebody for the romance. There's the Rosa. There's the Rosa. You decided to have a family, two, three bambinos. There's the Rosa. There's the Rosa. You get old, you want a company. There's the Rosa. There's the Rosa. You die, then you want a loyal wife to put a flower on your grave. There's the Rosa. Please, now I'm dead. The maker leave me alone. <laughs> okay, okay. I stop the talking about a rose again. I talk about a something else. What do you have for breakfast this morning? Eh? This is bread, glass of milk. I make it myself. <laughs> Poor countryman of Luigi. You know what I'm having for breakfast? I got a sausage made just the right with a garlic with a little spaghetti on the side. Then I have eggs. It made it just the right thing with the butter and a little more spaghetti on the side. Then to wash it down, I get a brown coffee. It made it just the right thing with the cream and the sugar and a little more spaghetti on the side. <laughs> and then I have the orange juice. With, with the spaghetti on the side? No, Luigi. With the orange juice, I have a ravioli on the side. <laughs> now, uh... How you like a breakfast like that, eh? Oh, Pasquale, I know have a breakfast like that since I live in Italy, and my mom, she make it for me. It's a funny thing, but unless my nose, she lies, I'm a smell a breakfast like that coming from your kitchen. It's impossible, but I smell it too. That's very strange, Luigi. Who could it be back there? Papa, why do you ask questions like that? I here. Well, it's a rose. What a surprise. How are you getting to Luigi's kitchen? Papa, you crazy? You know how I get in Luigi's kitchen. You wake me up at five in the morning. You buy me a new apron. You send me over to cook, and then you... All right, me turn up your face. <laughs> get her back in the kitchen. Papa's handling everything. Okay, Papa. <laughs> hey, Pasquale. What are you doing? Please, Luigi, is that all you can talk about, Rosa? We'll talk about something else. No, now it's necessary to talk about Rosa. What's she doing in my kitchen? Okay, I explain. Luigi, you're not fair to yourself or to Rosa. You never give yourself a chance to see maybe you like a Rosa. Show appreciation. Go inside, eat, talk. Maybe you like her. But Pasquale, I'm... Luigi, a... just a breakfast. To Go inside, eat. But the Pasquale... Please, Luigi, you're making me nervous. Go in and sit at the table and talk with her. It's like a make-believe a marriage. See how you like I make believe I'm married to Rosa? Just for ten minutes. So what do you say? I want a divorce. <laughs> Please, Luigi, I'm not asking her for much. Just that you give Rosa a chance. No. Look, she's a make a nice breakfast for you. It's wrong to waste the food. Go out in and eat, eh? Well, well, all right. I go in and eat. Well, that's all I do. No, you're talking to my boy. Go ahead. Please, stop a pushing. Hello, Rosa. Hello, Luigi. I come to eat the breakfast, do you make? Yes, Luigi. Sit down. Everything's ready on the table. You like my new apron? Pass me the spaghetti. You like me, Luigi? Mmm, it's a good spaghetti. Oh, Luigi, you make me so happy. Please, I only say it's a good spaghetti. Oh, Luigi. Oh, don't, don't be sad, Ross. You and me, we'd be good friends, huh? Here, here's an applicant. Don't cry. Oh, I wipe away one tear you miss. It's on a last chin. <laughs> I don't believe in my eyes. What's the matter, Pasquale? My Rosa, she's so happy, she's crying. But, Papa... But, Pasquale... Don't explain it, children. You've got my blessing. But, Papa... Please, Rosa, you've done your part, and now Papa's to do his part. You go back and help your mom. I make all of the arrangements. Okay, Papa. 
Well, Luigi, we're going to have a big wedding. I have a hundred people there. Ninety-nine. I'm not the show enough. <laughs> what? You make a mistake. I'm not the man of us. What do you mean? I'm going to see you try to kiss her. I'm going to see her cry. Either one is a mean of marriage. Pasquale, not try to trick me. I was a nice to Rosa. But I'm not the man in her. Oh, you get me so mad after all of my trouble. This is all you can say to me? No. Thanks for the breakfast. Luigi, you make me so angry, someday I'm going to tell a policeman. Poli- what do you mean? Is it no crime not to marry Rosa? No, no, but it's against the law for a bachelor man to adopt a little boy without a mama. That's what I mean. You mean a Jimmy O'Connor? But everybody knows he lives with me. In America, a boy must have a mother. If somebody's a tell a policeman, you're going to have to give him up. Who would tell us such a thing? Somebody who don't like you and I don't like you. <laughs> I don't give up Jimmy. I go to jail and he go with me. He's like my son, my friend, my only friend. Luigi, boy needs a mother. You need a wife. Mary Rosa, you got a boat. Mamma mia. Well, what do you say, my son? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Why, what's the matter? You're shaking. I'm, I'm in a big trouble, my teacher, Miss Paul. Now, calm yourself and tell me what's the matter. Pasquale, he just to come into my store. He say I must get the wife to hurry up a quick or a policeman come and take a Jimmy away. Is it not the truth? Is it the misfolding? No, but the authorities do prefer to place orphans with families or in recognized institutions. But you never tell me this when I take Jimmy. Well, I've been reporting regularly to Judge Norton in the juvenile court. He's extremely sympathetic, and I... Then if Pasquale is right, I must get the marriage. Well, I wouldn't say must. How else did Jimmy can have a mother? You must have met girls in your neighborhood. I met, but it cost the money to take a girl out. Once I take out Calata Purino. She's Antonio Purino's daughter. You know, the grocery man. We have a dinner in a place a downtown in a loop. Check. One dollar twenty cents. <laughs> well, that's not so bad. But she eat more than me. Who knows what the heart check came to? <laughs> no. No, I, I don't have the money to go look for a wife. I guess I go see Doc. He find me a wife. Who's Doc? He sell used the cars. I don't understand. He also takes a bet on the horses and arranges marriages. <laughs> Luigi, a marriage broker, is an old country custom. In America, a man usually finds his own wife. That's what I think, too, Miss Spalding. I always think, in America, I find a beautiful girl with brown eyes like a chestnut, with brown hair like tree in autumn. She speak like she born here. She like children. She like antiques, too. Old antiques like in my store. And the young antique like me. I learn the good English. And I say nice things. I make love in new language. Sure, it's very romantic in old language and all the country. But here in America, is more romantic. Take a walk. On the biggest streets with the lights, with the lots of people, looking in stores at nice things. Maybe not even a buy. Just a look is a pleasure. Go for a ride on top of a bus. Everything, everything here is adventure. Maybe, girl, don't laugh because I talk with a small accent. Maybe it's because she know that someday I'll be first-class American. Yes, Luigi. There is a girl like that for you. A girl who loves you and Jimmy and will want to help you and be a teacher to you both. Don't say no more, Miss Spalding. I accept. <laughs> Luigi, I mean, well, I wasn't referring to myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Spalding. I don't mean to embarrass you. It's a oh, test quite that I... all right, Luigi. It was a mutual misunderstanding. I'm very fond of both you and Jimmy, but I... No, no need to explain I understand. Is it the same with me and Rose? What I mean is... All right, Miss Pauling. I go see marriage broker Doc. I no find a girl like you. But I find her somebody. I'm sorry, Luigi. That's all right, Miss Pauling. If I do this, one thing is sure. Jimmy and all of my other American kids, they're going to find own wife or own husband, and they're going to live for good. Their papa, 
Luigi Dringo. And now for the second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. So you see, Mamma Mia, I got a big problem. If I don't get married, then maybe I lose the little bambino Jimmy O'Connor. But already I, I love him like my own son. So I decide to take no chances and go see Doc, the marriage broker. So soon I will be a married man, and I know you will love my wife. Only trouble, I don't know if I will. <laughs> but anyway, I go, and I'm knocking on the door of Doc, marriage broker, politician, and he used the car salesman. Come in, friend. Come in. Come in. Hello, Doc. Well, well, it's Luigi, my fine Italian friend. Happy Columbus Day, Luigi. Happy Columbus Day. But it's not the Columbus Day. It's not, huh? Well, he's a great man anyhow. A great man, Columbus. If he hadn't discovered America, I might be sitting here in India. Great people, the Indians, but with reservations, of course. <laughs> Doc. Oh, well, excuse, Doc, excuse me, excuse me. I'm a very, very busy man, a very busy... Hello? Hello, hello, Doc speaking. What? You're calling about the ad in today's paper. Yes, 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 it's a 39 Chevy. Is it clean? Why, this car was owned by an elderly school teacher who only drove it between school and her garage. The dear old lady treated it like it was a baby. You want to see it today? Uh, well, I'll have to check and see if it's ready. Uh, call me back in an hour. Right with you, Luigi, right with you. I'm a big man. Very busy, very busy. Yeah, very busy. Hello, hello, Pete. Say, about that Chevy. Did you fix the glass with the bullet holes yet? <laughs> okay, okay, Pete, fine. Goodbye. Doc, I, I, I gotta see you back. All right, Luigi, I know just what you came to see me for. You want a good used car. No, Doc, I want to get married. Oh, well, I'll get out my catalog. Here we are. <laughs> what a catalog this is. I have the most beautiful women in the world in this catalog. <laughs> like this one. No. How about this one? Oh, no. Luigi, I think there's only one way to solve the whole problem. How? Forget the wife, buy a car. <laughs> but that, I must get married. Must, must. Oh, oh, there's an urgency about it. Well, let's see. I got just the girl for Just got just the girl. Got just happen to have just the girl. Hello? Mrs. Gott, please. Oh, this is Mrs. Gott. Well, this is Doc. Uh, tell me, how's your husband? What? He's getting better? Oh, that penicillin. Hi, <laughs> right, Mrs. Gott. Check again in two weeks. <laughs> now, I just told you, you can't trust doctors today. But, Doc, what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do, i got to find a wife quick. Luigi, you're too particular. Now, if I find something for you, I'll get in touch with you. Right now, I haven't got a thing. But, Doctor... No, no, somebody's here. I'll get in touch with you later if anything turns out. Please, Doctor, it's important. I know, I know, Luigi. Hey, wait a minute. No, 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 not that way. Go out the back. You see, I, I never like different clients to see each other. Huh. All right. Nothing. All right. I know a girl who to marry. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye. Well, come in, friend. Come in, come in. Hello, Doc. Well, it's Pasquale, my fine Italian friend. Happy Columbus Day. Huh? Haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, what do you want to see me about? My daughter, Rosa. Rosa, Rosa. No, I don't, uh, don't ever remember seeing her around. What is she like? An angel, a little angel. Some man is going to be a lucky fella if he's going to get a hug. Well, then what do you need me for? I can't find a lucky fella. <laughs> But, Pasquale, I should think a shrewd businessman like you wouldn't have any trouble getting a husband for his daughter. I'm not so shrewd. I waste a lot of time and money on a fella to knock things to happen. Now, I'm tired of having my poor little LaRosa without a husband. She's a, such a little darling. Such a sweet angel. Such a... Such a... I gotta get rid of that girl! <laughs> Well, now, well, that's what Doc is here for, Pasquale, to lend a, a helping hand at a price. Uh, what the price? Shall we say a, uh, hundred dollars? I don't bargain. I give you a hundred dollars and a free dinner, Doc. Let's make it ninety and forget about the dinner. 
It just so happens that a fellow was in here only a minute ago who is dying to get married. That's so wonderful. He's got a money? He's got better than money. Huh? Yeah. He's got his own business. Now, you just go back to your store and relax, and I'll bring him to you like the proverbial fatted cat. Huh? Uh, no, no, no. Please, Doc. He shouldn't be fat. You know, roses and no skinny girl. <laughs> well, now, you trust me, friend. Just wait till you meet him. Oh, you're going to love it. I don't have to wait. Every man who's married by Rose, I love him already. <laughs> hello, Pasquale, my friend. Hello, hello. Hello, Luigi. I decided to make you very happy. You decided to make me happy? Yeah? See, si. I'm going to make you so happy, you're going to drop the data when I tell you. <laughs> Pasquale... I'm going to marry Ross. Mm. I have a big talk with myself. And I decide it's a mistake to marry a stranger. I marry Ross and take a chance. You sure you're going to marry Ross? Yes. Positive you're going to marry Ross? You want to talk me out of it, Papa? Don't call me Papa. I throw you out of my place. But this morning you said to me, Luigi, please marry Ross. Listen, Luigi, you have your chance you don't take. In America, opportunity to say hello only once. <laughs> you know, open the door, opportunity to go next door. <laughs> it's all right. I live next door. <laughs> you're crazy. You think you're the only pebble on the beach, eh? I got other fella for Rosa. <laughs> a businessman, a rich, has his own business. It doesn't need my money. I sue you for breach of promise. I'm going to get a lawyer. I'm going well, to... Well, well, here I am, Pasquale, right on the job. Oh, Luigi. Just the man I'm looking for. Well, well, hold out of your arms, Doc. I'm going to throw him right at you. Oh, Pasquale, I'm surprised at you. This is no way to treat your future son-in-law. Don't tell me how... how... What do you say, Doc? Well, I mean, Luigi's the man I was telling you about in my office. He needs a wife. You got a daughter. The issue seems clear to me. As that great philosopher once said, gentlemen, and he made a lot of sense. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. See, you clear me up, Doc. You tell me you come over and you take me to meet a fellow for Rosa, no? My exact words with a slight inflection. And uh, Luigi, is it a fellow, No. No doubt about it. This is the man. In fact, he saved me the trouble by coming to the store himself. So, you see, my job is done. From the looks of things, you two should be very unhappy. But, as the great philosopher once said, unhappiness is caused. There's no doubt about it, my friend. <laughs> and goodbye, gentlemen. I leave you with two words. I am. <laughs> Luigi. Hello, Luigi. I love my son-in-law. Goodbye, Papa. Wait a minute, Luigi, my friend. I lose my temper before. That's all right, Pasquale. You find it again. I'm no mean what I say. I get excited. The words are spilling from my mouth are like a wine is a spiller from a bottle. Forget it, Pasquale. You forget it, too? Sure. Then do you marry Rosa? I forget that, too. <laughs> Listen to me, Luigi. Take a easy. If you change your mind, I change mine. That's called fair exchange. No, no, you don't mean it, there's a Luigi. You marry Rosa. She likes you. She likes a Jimmy, too. You know, today, just today, she said to me, Papa, I like a Jimmy. Rosa, say that? Sure. I make him my grandson. My wife, Teresa, she make him a grandma. Well, it's pretty nice for Jimmy to have Grandpa, Grandma, Mama all in one time. Okay, Pasquale. Okay. Here's a deal. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, boss. Say, what were you doing at Doc? You buying a used car, boss? No, don't be silly, Jimmy. I can't even afford to buy a new one. <laughs> then you're not. Boss, you're not. Not what? You're not getting married, are you? Because Doc's a marriage broker. No, Jimmy, I never marry a stranger. Well... I marry Rosa. Rosa? She like you, Jimmy. But you don't like her. I always like Rosa, Jimmy. You never did before. I began it this morning. Are you sure, boss? Positive. Now we're all happy. I'm not going to let you do this, Mr. Luigi. You're not going to let me do this, huh? I'm the boss, not you. If I marry a girl, I marry her because I want to. 
You got to nothing to do with it. You stay out of my love life. If I say to you I like a roaster, don't argue with me or I fire you. But, boss, I was only Never trying to... Never mind. Jimmy, I know what's the best for you. Hello, Luigi. Hello, Jimmy. Miss Spaulding. This is Judge Norton, Luigi. Judge... Judge Norton from a juvenile court. How do you do, Mr. Bosco? Hello, Jimmy. Hello. I already fixed everything, Judge. I Jimmy, to... would you excuse us for a moment? Yes, ma'am. Listen, Judge. I only find out about the law this morning. And I already make arrangements to marry Rosa as soon as possible. Miss Spaulding mentioned her. Do you love Rosa? Does the law say I must love her, Judge? <laughs> no, but unless there is love, you still haven't provided the proper atmosphere for Jimmy. Then what I do, Judge? What I do? I came out here, Mr. Bosco, because Miss Spaulding told me about your difficulty. I wanted to meet you and see for myself the kind of environment and home you've provided for the boy. In the back is too small a bedroom. Kitchen. No, 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 no. I, I don't mean that. Here is a store. All the statues. American presidents. Colonial furniture. Jimmy does know his American history, Judge. I've examined his report cards at school. And Miss Spaulding has given you, Mr. Bosco, an excellent recommendation. I do the same for her, Judge. <laughs> I still feel that Jimmy should have a mother. But as long as he's a fine student and is happy, I think we can let this matter rest. I won't review this case for another six months. Six months? Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Spaulding. Jimmy! Jimmy! He'd be so happy, Judge. Yes, what? Jimmy, we don't have to get married. <laughs> Not for six months. Oh, that's great. Please, Judge. Do you want a statue? Pick out any one you want. I'll drop in some other time and buy one. You don't buy, Judge. I give you. But, boss. Shut up, Jimmy. Hey, Louis, see, I'm a sit on a pins and a needles waiting for you. I think you're stuck, Pasquale. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't marry Rosa. Is that to sell? You don't marry Rosa. Listen to me, Luigi. Twice in one a day you say you marry Rosa, and twice you say no. He's consistent, Mr. Pasquale. Never mind you. <laughs> you don't marry Rosa, Luigi. I go straight to the police. I go to the judge in one minute, and I tell him... You tell him in one second. Pasquale, here is a judge in Austin. Him? First time I think is a statue. <laughs> Good afternoon, a judge. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Pasquale? Please, Sir Judge, you make him a marry, Rosa. That's entirely up to Mr. Bosco. I've just told him that he has six months in which to find a mother for Jimmy. So now, Pasquale, I wait the six months. Maybe you wait the six months, but I'll be here first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to listen this coming Sunday night when Life with Luigi joins Jack Benny in the great new lineup of programs over CBS. And hear Luigi Basco write another letter to Mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production written by High Craft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is directed by Wilbur Hatch. Starting this coming Sunday, the first Sunday of 1949, Jack Benny comes here to CBS with all the people who have helped make his show so famous. Mary Livingston, Rochester, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and Don Wilson. You'll find Jack on CBS with the crazy situations, the absurd minor characters, his violin, and his famous Maxwell. So remember, from here on in, it's CBS Sundays at 7 Eastern Standard Time for The Jack Benny Show. Be sure to tune in the great CBS Sunday night lineup with Jack Benny, Amos and Andy, Life with Luigi and our Miss Brooks over CBS. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>